Hello friend, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Susie and I teach lots of things to do with hand lettering or modern calligraphy. I have lots of different tutorials and some free resources for you that I will link in the description box below. But today I wanted to talk to you about a super simple trick for drawing nice ovals in brush lettering. So I know lots of people do not like drawing ovals. It can be really tricky to draw a nice oval that connects perfectly. And I think part of that is because of the fact that you are drawing a thick stroke on one side and a thinner stroke on the other. Not to mention ovals are in so many of the letters that we draw when we are doing hand lettering. So if you are struggling to draw a nice oval, then you are likely struggling to draw a lot of letters like A or D or G and even more than that. So as you can see, that oval shape is the base of a lot of these letters and drawing a different looking oval can make a completely different look for your letters. If you draw a super narrow and tall oval, many of your letters will take on a much different look than if you were to draw a slanted or more round looking oval. On the other hand, if you are just struggling completely to create an oval that ends meet up nicely, then it could just throw off the look of a lot of your letters. So this trick is so simple, but I still wanted to share because I think even though it's simple, it can still be a huge game changer when you're drawing your ovals and it all has to do with where you start drawing your oval. So let's say that we are drawing on this dotted line. Many times we practice hand lettering by starting our oval at the top of this line, which I'm demonstrating with the first oval. This seems really practical and easy when you are just using a ballpoint pen or a pencil. So it makes sense that we would start here. But what happens when we use a brush pen? Well, in hand lettering, our downstrokes typically get thicker and our upstrokes typically get thinner. But the tops and the bottoms of our ovals can be the places where our strokes kind of start to taper off from one to the other. This means that if you start at the top and then you bring your oval all the way down and around and back up to meet that first part of your stroke, you have to have a lot of control over how hard you are pushing down on that brush pen tip so that those ends can meet up seamlessly. And honestly, if you've been practicing with a brush pen for a super long time, you may be able to do that. However, if you are still working on that brush pen control, this can be super hard. But here is where the trick comes in. If you move that starting point over to the right hand side of your oval, maybe about the two or three o'clock mark, then your oval will both start and end with a pretty thin line. When I first began hand lettering, my ovals probably looked a little bit more like this, where there is a slight lump at the top where my ends meet. Now in this video, I outline these a bit to show you the difference, and you can see that the one where I started at the top isn't quite as smooth as it is on the one where I started from the side. Now the ease of connecting the two ends is one reason that I like to start from the side with my ovals, but another reason is because if and when I don't connect them neatly, it usually doesn't make a big difference. And the reason for that is because with most of our letters, we're actually going to cover up that connection with our next stroke anyway. So let's say that I mess up and have a bumpy connection here. Well, when I create the downstroke on my A, you really shouldn't see it much anyway. This allows a bit more flexibility when you're learning how to connect those thin, tricky ends of the oval. On the other hand, you can see with the first A here that I have a connection at the top that isn't quite seamless, and even when I add my downstroke, it's still there just right on top. But the one next to it, again, is hidden by my second stroke. So I mentioned how it's a bit easier to connect those lines seamlessly because of their width. So even though this one here is pretty close to perfect when it comes to matching up those ends, you can still see that there's some different coloring because of the different way that my strokes were going when I was drawing each side. So here I'm doing a downstroke and then it turns into an upstroke. So even though I was able to match that pretty well, with many pens you are going to be able to see that. Now it's not a huge deal, but it's just something that I think is a bonus of starting from the side because I can kind of hide that if I like by drawing right over it. But this usually only works if I have started that oval on this side, but I'm not usually going to draw over the top of my oval unless I'm doing a lowercase o. Sometimes I do a little loop over the top, but you know, for a lot of these other letters, that second stroke does come on this side of the oval. So I hope that this super simple trick was helpful for you. If you have not joined my free seven day hand lettering mini course yet, you can do so at howtohandletter.com slash mini course. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. 
Hey, I heard you got a new best friend. Yeah, it hurts a bit. I won't pretend that it doesn't matter that you're with someone else. Mm. In a way, that's how it's supposed to be. If I'm unable 